Thanks very much. Well, the prosecution in the trial against Dr. Conrad Murray says that the doctor killed the king of pop, Michael Jackson, by giving him a lethal dose of drugs. Well, the defense says that Jackson was the one who delivered the final blow. So, just how did Michael Jackson die? Michael Jackson swallowed eight two milligram lorazepam pills. But when Dr. Murray left the room, Michael Jackson self-administered a dose of propofol <coughs> that with the lorazepam created a perfect storm in his body that killed him instantly. Here to explain, a doctor who knows these kinds of drugs inside and out, the president-elect of the New York State Society of Anesthesiologists, Dr. Salvatore Vital. Good to see you, doctor. Yeah, good morning, Gretchen. Thank you very much. So we heard there from the defense that these drugs were self-inflicted and that it created a perfect storm of immediate and mm. instantaneous death. Yes. You deal with these two drugs combinations all the time. Is yes. that plausible? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a, a very dramatic statement, um, Gretchen. And what I'd like people, your viewers, to understand is that these drugs are administered routinely during anesthetic care. And that if they have to receive these drugs, they shouldn't be afraid that they're going to die instantly. Um, let's say you were to come for some surgery today. I would have an intravenous in you. I would give you some of these benzodiazepines to make you feel relaxed. And then I'd give you some propofol intentionally. And I would intentionally cause you to stop breathing. Mm -hmm. The key here is that I'm trained in the use of the drugs. I will apply a mask to your face and start ventilating you by hand and helping you breathe. And then what I may do is put a breathing tube in your windpipe and then continue to help you breathe. We commonly do this for surgery. So likely what this combination does is it causes apnea. It causes you to stop breathing. Mm -hmm. With properly trained individuals, um, People don't die instantly, they right. stop breathing. I have to say, when I read the notes, uh, because I've had these drugs for surgery, when I read the notes that patients do actually stop breathing, it, it did take me aback a little bit. Yeah, and that's why I don't want your viewers to be afraid that, oh my God, I can't, you know, don't administer these drugs. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing I need to tell you about propofol is there is a warning the FDA has on the drugs, and people who want more information about it should go to our American Society of Anesthesiologists website. Uh, the drug was introduced in the early 90s, and it replaced thiopental, which was terrible. People were vomiting after surgery. They hated it. Right. And in 2005, uh, the American College of Gan uh, Gastroenterologists wanted to reduce that warning remove it and our American society has a very good uh, discussion on propofol and why the warning needs to be there okay. this is a drug that should be administered well, by people who know to give general anesthesia right so, so obviously people understand that this should not have been administered privately in a home for somebody to try and go to sleep but do you find it interesting that apparently his doctor dr. Murray uh, requested a CPR machine just a few days before he died I mean is this something that you also have on hand in the event that somebody has a problem with these drugs? Yeah, I've never really heard of what we call a, a CPR machine. There is, I would assume this is an automated defibrillated device. Mm -hmm. And more and more as they become uh, less expensive and more available, they uh, are used to save people who have arrhythmias. So it wouldn't, I mean, it wouldn't be totally un uh, unreasonable to have this type of machine around. But the most important thing would be to be a doctor who actually does this on a daily basis right. and, and understands the ramifications. The, the things that our societies want to emphasize is that anesthesia is safe, propofol is a safe drug. Optimally, an anesthesiologist should be involved every time propofol is given. Right. We understand there are situations where an anesthesiologist may not be available, but what we w want is that people who are trained in managing the airway and trained in general anesthesia be there. Doctor, thanks very much for your time this All morning right. and the explanation. Coming up next